to bring a Bible this morning. Well, I'll tell you where to turn here as soon as I remember where to turn. Uh, up on the screen, you see the word Memorial Day. Now, I got a pocket full of candy. You got to answer a question. Okay? And the whole pocket will go to whatever young person can answer the question. Now, if no young person answers the question, I'll still give out the candy, just one piece at a person, all right? But who can tell me what Memorial Day is? Okay? You know what Christmas is. You know what Easter is. What is Memorial Day? You think you know. What is it? A family day. Michaela. Remember soldiers. Give her a hand. All right. Don't worry, I've got more candy. After church, you'll get a piece, all right? And I went to my favorite Amish store yesterday where I can buy a whole big bag of little Snickers minis for a buck and a half. That's a $10 bag or $15 bag of candy. So I won't tell you how much money I spent on it. It was, it was, it was a lot. So, I have plenty to go. I have a problem, and I was talking to my sister about it. I asked her what the song's titles were on the numbers that she gave me, the song numbers she gave me. She said, I don't remember what they were. I said, oh, you have short-term memory problems too, huh? She said, yeah. So, I have a problem remembering things. So I'm glad we have a day called Memorial Day. And what it's really all about, there are certain emblems. We all are using the flag today. There's flags, people putting out, we saw people putting flags at cemeteries yesterday. And um, in some cases, they usually will have the Boy Scouts go out and put flags on all the graves at Jefferson Barracks, they wouldn't let them do it this year. That's a shame. That's a shame. Those guys should never be forgotten. Amen. Never be forgotten. There are certain emblems that we use. This is one of the famous paintings at Valley Forge. And those soldiers had it rough. Washington spent many a day on his knees in prayer, beseeching God that God would grant him and his soldiers the freedom that they longed for, the freedom that men had already died for. Each one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence realized that by signing their name, more than likely, they would be targeted by King George and his troops. And many of them were. So you know on the Declaration of Independence, what's the most prominent name on that document? John Hancock. Do you know why? King George had to have reading glasses, and John Hancock said, I won't even be able to see my name without reading glasses. He was inviting the suffering that he knew would come when King George saw his name on that document and knew that more than likely he would lose his farm, his substance, and even his life. hard to find people like that anymore but they're still around and to anybody they, hey 
you governors like Pritzker, let it be known. You've already seen the wrath, just a glimpse of what the American people will no longer tolerate. This is the last place in the world that has the freedoms that we have. If we lose them, there are no more. That's Valley Forge. I've been to Gettysburg. I've been to this battlefield. It's quite a sight. This is the fight that we had to fight brother against brother, literally. Men of the same family drawn into conflict over one issue. The fact that God did create all men equal. All men. That from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people should not perish from the earth. That's what Abraham Lincoln said at Gettysburg. This is the World War I monument. Not a lot is said about World War I. Uh, probably because all of the soldiers who fought at World War I are now long gone and past. But the memorial stays as a reminder to not forget that World War I was actually one of the bloodiest battles for American soldiers. They were poorly equipped, poorly armed, and yet we won. Who can forget this? I have an uncle who is still alive. Was he a sergeant? Sergeant Harry Matthews, United States Marine Corps, who fought alongside of men like this on those Japanese islands. This is actually, this picture was a reenactment. They actually raised the flag on Mount Siribachi, the Marines did, but the photographers wanted to get a picture of it, so they reenacted it, and this is the reenactment. It's a famous picture. They actually made a bronze statue of this exact thing, but it was the determination of the American spirit that said, you attacked us first without provocation. And if you think we're going to let that go, you're wrong. And it ended up with the Japanese emperor, who at the time was revered and believed that he was a living God on this earth. It ended up with the emperor of Japan bowing in front of General MacArthur. Maria, Sister Hyun Mi, is with us today because of a communist dictator who wanted to control the entire Korean Peninsula. And they asked for the help of the United States of America, and we went and made sure that at least part of Korea remained free and she is here with us because of the blood of American soldiers. 
This is one of my favorite pictures. We have a lot of men that came back who were reduced to alcoholism, drugs, all sorts of emotional difficulties because of the way that war was fought. But I say those men still fought with honor. And then to those who served in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in any place in the Middle East, and to this day, any place where the freedom of this country comes under siege. And I'll say that I am glad that the man who gutted our military is no longer in office. I believe he is a traitor. And I believe the woman who was, would have replaced him was a traitor too. And I believe the guy that wants to replace the guy we got now is a traitor. And we should never let these people again rule over us. Amen. Never. Now take your Bible, turn to Exodus chapter 13. I looked the word up, it's actually in the Bible. There are things that God did not want people to forget. There are things, the reason why I ask the children is it is the duty, and again, Jim and Cheryl, I cannot tell you how proud we are of Charlie. Willing to serve his country. You tell him that our hearts go out to him and we're very proud of him. There are things that we, as parents, we're supposed to teach our children. We're supposed to teach them about patriotism. You're supposed to teach them that no matter what they learn in college, you don't burn a flag. And that no matter what position you hold in the NFL, you don't take a knee during the national anthem. That you remove your hat. When the Pledge of Allegiance is said. Things that we're supposed to teach our children. That the reason why we have people who do burn flags. And who decide to take a knee in protest. The reason why they had that freedom. Is because soldiers who they hate died. To guarantee that freedom. We're supposed to teach that to our children. That's why we have Memorial Day. Exodus 13, verse 5. Exodus 13 is, they have left or are leaving Egypt. Exodus 14 then is where they get to the Red Sea and they're... Troubled because Pharaoh's chasing after them and they don't know what to do. They got the Red Sea on one side, Pharaoh on the other, and they're pretty sure they're all going to die. And then God opens up the sea. But Exodus 13 is they are finishing the Passover. And they are going to gather their things and they're going to, they're going to leave. They're going to finally get out of bondage. And in verse 5 it says, And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he sware unto thy fathers to give thee, a land flowing with milk and honey, 
that thou shalt keep this service in this month. So the first Passover was the night that God sent the destroyer to every house to kill the every firstborn child from every household, including Pharaoh's. The destroyer angel does not care about titles and status. The only thing that held back the destroyer was the blood of the lamb. Somebody say amen. So the first Passover was basically to keep everybody in the house alive. The second Passover was to commemorate a free people to look back at what happened that night, the 14th, or the night of the 13th into the 14th day of the second month. What happened that night when God's people were spared because of the blood and everybody else had somebody in their family that died. They were supposed to look back and remember what happened and how God saved them that night. And they were to never forget it. God said, I want this commemorated every year so that they don't forget. And he said, verse 6, seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. Leaven, we talked about in Sunday school, it's a type of false doctrine. It's type of uh, false ideas. So the unleavened bread is this book right here with no lies in it whatsoever. Somebody say amen. I do not believe in a Bible that has a lie in it. Amen. Don't believe in it. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days and there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee. Neither shall there be... I mean, look around you. There are no NIVs in this church. There be no leaven bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou, listen, verse 8, look at verse 8. Underline that. Thou shalt show thy son. You're supposed to teach your children about the day that God saved you. You're supposed to teach that to your children. Number one, you're not ever supposed to forget it. And number two, you're supposed to teach your children about the day that God saved you. Thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of the... You hear the person, he's saying it personally now. Son, daddy, why are we eating lamb tonight? We don't eat lamb. Daddy, that's the best lamb we have. Why are we killing that lamb? Daddy, that lamb is only a year old. And we have older lambs that we could eat. Why are we killing the youngest lamb that we have? Daddy, why are we doing this? Son, you were too little to remember. Or you were, this was before you were born. But the reason why we're not serving Pharaoh in Egypt anymore is because one night God set us all free. And a destroying angel came and was killing. It would have killed, son, it would have killed you. Son, you're too young to remember. But it would have killed you had they not seen the blood of the lamb that protected our house. Son, I would have lost you had it not been for the blood of the lamb. Son, don't ever forget What's been done for you? That's what we're supposed to teach our children. In verse 9, that shall be a sign unto thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes. Think about what he's saying here. It shall be for a memorial in thine hand and a sign unto thee uh, between thine eyes. Now, I never really put a Bible up here. And it just melted through. But I think what that means is most of our conscious decisions are made right here. And if you will allow this book in here, you won't have any problem making a lot of those decisions. Somebody say amen. 
and that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth, for with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Let's pray, because I don't know how to preach the rest of this, but pray that God will open up our eyes and our hearts. And let's, um, let's tell God thank you for the lives that have been lost so that we could remain free. And for the one life that was given willingly so that all men could be free. Father, we come to you today and we thank you, dear God, for a country where we can still come into your house to worship you. And Father, it is a shame. It is an absolute shame that in this country we have pastors who are too afraid to stand up and say, we're having church. Father, a hairdresser stood with more honor than some pastors in this country. Father, I pray that you would stir up the hearts of pastors everywhere. And they would say, we're going to the house of the Lord. Now, Father, it may cost them. They may be jailed. They may be in prison. They may be fined. We risked coming here during a time when we were not supposed to be here. But it was a risk worth taking. Because, Father, we have cemeteries all over the world with the bodies of American men who said the risk is worth it. It's hard to find that kind of bravery anymore. Father, I pray that you would stir it up in us to be a brave people because freedom is never gained by the cowards. Never. So, Father, teach us the price that has been paid, the memorials, Father, are there to help us remember that we used to be a moral people. We used to be the good guys who, when a country was in danger and asked for our help, we went gladly so that those people could also be free like we were. Father, we have forgotten how to do that. Stir up our hearts and help us to always do what is right, not just what's convenient. Help us, Father, to remain a free people and help us to never, ever forget the cost of the lives that have been paid for the freedom that we enjoy. Bless your word, I pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said... Amen. Turn to Exodus 28. Uh, in fact, you know what? I want to hold off on that. I'm going to switch some things around. I'm going to hold that until the last. Turn to Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. Look at verse 22. I, I, I did. I looked up. I thought, I wonder if the word memorial is in the Bible. It sure is. It's in there a bunch of times. Now, be thankful that I didn't put down every place where the word memorial is in the sermon this morning. I cut some of it down for you. 
But some of them I thought stood out. Leviticus 23 is one of those places. In verse 22, he said, When you reap the harvest of your land, and thou shalt make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest, thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. Number one, let us not forget that there are people who do not have what we have. Let us not forget that there are people who don't have the food that we have. We are trying to figure out a way to feed the people of Kenya around this crazy virus that's got everybody afraid and draconian measures have been enforced. They won't let us gather people together so we can save their lives. So we decided we're going to just send people out one by one to every house that we can find and give them the food that they need because it's the right thing to do. Uh, we've already sent over close to $5,000 to start feeding people that need to be fed. Because in that place, we, they've already had two locust plagues go through. I have no idea how those people are surviving if they are. But it would be a shame if we had the ability to do something about it and didn't. Somebody came in this morning, handed me a pile of money, and they said, this probably needs to go to Kenya, but you put it wherever you need to. So we're going to make sure it gets to Kenya. Then he said in verse 23, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month... And I, let, me, let me back up a second. So, now, some of you, somebody somewhere might be saying, But pastor, you can't feed them all. I know. I wish I could. But I know we can't feed them all. But we can feed one. We can feed 10 and we can feed a hundred. And if God helps us, we can feed a thousand or 2000 or 3000. May not be able to feed everybody, but that doesn't mean that we can't feed anybody. If we have it, we're going to use it. It's the right thing to do. Then, now, verse 24, speaking to the children of Israel, saying in the seventh month, the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing what? What are we waiting to hear? I'm waiting for trumpets. Amen? What does that mean, Wayne? Charge! Let's go. Amen. You shall have a more of blowing trumpets and holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Leviticus 24. Turn there. Oh, I like this one. A memorial of bread. Leviticus 24, verse 5. Thou shalt take fine flour and bake 12 cakes thereof. Why 12? Why 12? There was 12 tribes. You know, some of those tribes were smaller than others. Do you think that they made little, little, little loaves for them? Everybody got the same. So he said, verse... Um, Two tenths of deal shall be in one cake, verse six, and thou shalt set them in rows, six in a row, upon the pure table before the Lord. That's the table that was on the north side of the tabernacle. That table is Psalm 23. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row. Boy, doesn't that smell good. Bread. Fresh, hot bread 
with olive oil on it and frankincense. And thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row that it may be the, on the bread for a what? Even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. What that represents is God has set before you every day. What's in the Lord's prayer? Give us this hour. They did this every day. Twelve loaves for each tribe. We're in the New Testament, so we have apostles, twelve apostles. For each apostle, for each kind of Christian that there is, for each little breed of Christian, for each little denomination that still will call upon the name of the Lord, twelve fresh baked rolls of bread and the frankincense. If you didn't smell the bread, the frankincense, you would smell that. And you would go, boy, that smells good. That's the way we ought to think about our Bible. Somebody say amen. Don't forget to read your Bible. Amen. The memorial is, don't forget God's Word. By the way, blood was shed to get you this book. Lives were lost so that you would be able to read the Bible in your language. Oh, look at number 16. Here's, a, here's one. I remember when the Iraqi people, that big statue of Saddam Hussein, remember that? What'd they do with it, Wayne? Tore it down. And you know what they did after that? They took their shoe. Remember how they threw a shoe at George Bush? To them, slapping somebody with a shoe must be like flipping them off or something. So they took their shoes off and they were beating that statue of Saddam Hussein. Look, number 16, verse 36. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hallowed. Not everybody was allowed to be a part of the service of the Lord. The censers of these sinners against their own souls, let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar. There were people, he's going to mention a name here in a minute, who were not God's people, even though they were among God's people. They were not God's people. And apparently they were burning incense, which they were trying to do it on their own. And God said, take their censers, take what the material that is made out of, and beat it down as broad plates for a covering of the altar. For they offer them before the Lord, therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be assigned unto the children of Israel. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers, wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar. To be a memorial, I look at verse 40, to be a memorial unto the children of Israel, that no stranger, which is not of the seed of Aaron, come near to offer incense before the Lord, that he not be as Korah. There was to be a memorial to remind people what happened to Korah. He rebelled against, he was Moses' first cousin. He rebelled against Moses. He led a rebellion against God's man. And, they, and the ground opened up and swallowed them all. And there, those brazen plates, the cover for the altar, was to be a reminder to everybody, don't do what Korah did. There's even a mention of that in the New Testament when it talks about the false prophets and the false teachers and those who would lead people away from the gospel because they mentioned the gainsaying of Korah. And God said, don't you ever forget what I did to Korah and don't be like Korah. Should be a reminder to us every day not to rebel against the Lord. Now, where do I want to go? Go back now to Exodus 28. I mentioned earlier I have problems remembering. I don't know why. Maybe it's my mind is like a bag of squirrels. Huh? 
Definitely. Got a young man here that came to visit us. I can't remember your name. Ray. That was an easy one. I, I don't know why I can't remember. I'm glad he's here. Amen. Amen. I told him when he came here, I sat and talked with him and I told him, I said, I think you're sitting with a bunch of people that you share something in common with. Raise your hand if you've struggled with life. These people have had some pretty serious issues in their life. Battles that they fought and lost. Battles that they fought and won. And none of us deserve to be here. Amen? But by God's grace. So you make Ray feel at home this morning, all right? Exodus 28, verse 9, Thou shalt take two onyx stones, grave on them the names of the children of Israel. Six of their names. Isn't that, isn't that neat? He laid out bread, 12 loaves of bread for each of those 12 tribes. Now he's going to put their names on a breastplate. Six of their names on one stone, the other six names on the rest on the other stone according to their birth. In other words, Reuben was first, Simeon, Levi, Judah, the order that they were born in. That's given to us in the Bible. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet. A signet is a sign, a seal. Shalt thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in ouches of gold. And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial. Unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his shoulders for a memorial. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been burdened with somebody in particular that you were praying for and the weight of that was on your shoulders? Have you ever had that? I do all the time. I worry about people. I pray for them. I worry about them. I care about them. But not like Jesus. Look at verse 29. This, I remember reading this first time and I wept. Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart. And we say that, we use that term. What's the matter with you, Pastor Mike? Well, I've got some people on my heart. That I'm burdened over. There's some people that I'm worried about. There's some people I'm praying for. There's some people that are sick that I'm, I'm afraid for them. And I bear that on my heart. And But look at the rest of the verse. The breastplate of judgment upon his heart. When he goeth in unto the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. Here's what that's a picture of. The high priest is Christ. He's the one that bears the names of the children of Israel upon his heart when he went and hung on the cross. When he did that, he had on his heart the names of everybody that he was dying for, including yours. Somebody say amen. I'm doing this, Father, for Mike Hoggard. And the angel said, Mike Hoggard, really? Yes, Mike Hoggard. I'm doing this for him. I'm doing this for John, I'm doing this for Sterling. I'm doing this for Ray. 
I'm doing this for everybody. So he, as a memorial, had the names of us written on his heart so that we wouldn't be forgotten when he died. Because he died for them. Amen? This do in remembrance of me. What that means is when we come into this house, we're going to have communion before too long. Actually, I'm kind of thinking, and the guys help me think about this, because sometimes I think stuff and I'm going, ah, that's a bad idea. Homecoming. Because I found a box of Jewish Passover matzah bread yesterday for a buck. A dollar. And Lisa said, yeah, but what are we going to do with the rest of it? I said, if we throw it away, I still got it for a buck. I mean, this is the real deal stuff. This is Jewish stuff. You know it's right, amen? There ain't no leaven in it. But when we do this, it ain't about us. It's about him. I mean, wouldn't it be sad if we let the liberals of this country tear down every war memorial that we had? Some of them want to. That's, that makes me sick. It makes me kind of shooting mad. I ain't going to shoot them. But it ain't right. So what would it be like if we let them tear down every war memorial in this country and then we forgot those men that died? That would be a shame. You know what would happen after that? tyranny those people would gladly turn this into a communist dictatorship in a they would be Israel saying give us a king in a heartbeat so you know why we have those memorials around and Memorial Day so we don't forget those guys who spilled their blood willingly who when the end gate of that ship let down, and those men crawled off on Omaha Beach, knowing the Germans were already firing right at them. They said, let's go get them! Some of them never made it to shore. But the ones that did made sure that the blood of those who died was avenged. Amen. And then, you study history. When we beat Hitler and beat all of his forces, we took over Germany and we made sure that they never did that to us again. Same thing with Japan. That's why MacArthur went over there and that's why the God Emperor had to bow to MacArthur. And we made sure you're never going to do this to us again. Amen? Amen? And that same resolve we ought to have now. But also here. And I want to say something to my church. When I say we're having communion service, that's the most poorly attended service that we have. And that's a shame. Because we're supposed to come and do that to remember Him. And if you don't, that's just like knocking down one of them war memorials as far as I'm concerned. I ain't trying to say you have to do it to be saved. I shouldn't have to. 
if you're saved. I mean, why are these guys wearing flag shirts? Because they want to. I, love, I still love my country. I ain't turned my back on it yet. Okay? It's still worth fighting for. And those guys are still worth remembering. And so is Jesus. Amen.